and we are back we are back and we are getting into our final conversation of the morning we have been joined in studio this morning by the coordinator of the belize city group uh, for the Euromay project, we have been joined by Cynthia Caetano. Good morning. Good morning, and thanks mm -hmm. for having us. No and I'm problem. one of the coordinators. You're mm -hmm. one of the coordinators. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're also here uh, with the managing director of the Euromay project, Dr. Jerry Valentine. Jeremy. Jeremy, Jeremy. Valentine. My apology. Good morning. Good morning. How did the Euromay project come about? And what are we seeking to do with this initiative? All right. Um, the Urmay Project was born at Stan Creek Ecumenical in Nandriga. Mm -hmm. I was the principal there for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, our teachers, some of our teachers, really wanted to visit Urmay St. Vincent. Yes. You know, that that's the homeland for the, for the mm -hmm. Garinogu. So we got in touch with um, James Curtis. We were here with him the last time with the pen yeah. release. Mm -hmm. And we shared with him what we wanted to do. And um, he shared that it would be great for us to go, but it would be even better if we would go and do some work in St. Vincent, some mm -hmm. retrieval work, some teaching. Um, so we decided, okay, well, actually, I visited um, St. Vincent and oh my goodness. What was that like for you? Oh my goodness. I was totally unprepared. I had mm -hmm. heard um, people from Dangriga going to St. Vincent mm -hmm. and then it, it's all emotional and so on. And then I said, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then I, we, we had just finished a school year and then it mm -hmm. was just boom, 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 um, get on a plane and go. And so it was, I was totally, when I landed, I wept for three days. Wow. I was just it's like a spiritual my, oh my are we awakening God. yes well, think, what was going through your mind you think that triggered the, the tears just the you, you see our parents told us from the time we were young mm -hmm. that there was an exile of the Garifuna people from mm -hmm. St. Vincent mm -hmm. there are all these songs about the exile mm -hmm. and the sadness of it and all of that we know it in head mm -hmm. all of us know the story by head when you are standing on that wharf yeah and that was probably the same wharf from where they were pregnant people, old people, mm -hmm. your own people were removed mm -hmm. to go somewhere else. They don't know where they were going or what is going to happen to them. They have left everything behind. I literally um, lost control of my feet. Miss Dina, another principal, because we were at a principal's conference, she came and she, she came to me and she said something happened you heard news from home something wrong <laughs> <laughs> you know, but i was just in a in a in a state mm -hmm. you know and then um that night the prime minister um that yeah he gave a speech mm -hmm. and he singled out he asked where are the people from the south of belize the people mm -hmm. from dangriga and the people from from punta gorda and he said you're my people we're family and he went on to give the story of the exile. Oh, God. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. yeah. Tears and tears and tears. I had to fight it myself to go to the sessions because I was there on behalf of the institution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the institution had paid for me to go. Yeah. I had to be present. I had to pay attention <laughs> and listen yeah. and take away things to the school. But then there was just all of this. As a matter of fact, I was like, even my, my close friends on the trip, mm -hmm. they were wondering what, what, because yeah. I was in another, yeah. in another, yeah. yes. And um, I got the opportunity because I hadn't mentioned to Mr. Curtis that I was going. And then I said, let me give this man a call because all the things, because every conversation you have with him, we need to go and do some work in mm -hmm. Vincent, sorry, Mr. Curtis. Yeah. But yeah, I, but I got it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I finally, I got it. And in the process of planning, and then we began to plan how we're going to, what we're going to do and how we're going to go about getting this done. In the process, we realized, we at Ecumenical, we the teachers who are part of the project, realized that we're going to go and teach, but we also need to learn because mm -hmm. we need to be strong in what we're going to go and teach. Mm -hmm. And so we began to think, um, Garifuna language classes, Mr. Roy Caetano, he came every Tuesday mm -hmm. to um, work with us. And then Miss Marsha came to sing with us. Yeah. And then COVID hit. And then, yeah. yes. But that is how the Remake Project was born. Yeah. Wow. 
That's such that's a powerful a moment. Like I could, I think there were photos of a Belizean group that had gone to, a group of Belizean, I'm sorry, who had gone to St. Vincent as well, who had a very similar emotional experience. Yes, it is, it is, it is emotional. You yeah. Know, it was, Everyone yeah. who goes there, they say the same thing. I haven't been there, but definitely that's on my bucket list and yeah. very soon. Did you go, get to go to Balisau? No, I saw Balisau though. We, mm -hmm. from Bekwe, from one of the islands. islands um, yeah. I took a lot of pictures, but I didn't actually, it didn't materialize. We were trying to arrange it, but it didn't materialize for us to go. But I saw it and I, I will be prepared when I go to Balisau I this hope. time. <laughs> I, I will mentally prepare myself because I do not want to be a mess in front of people. So. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what you've described is so powerful. Yeah. I think that idea of connecting with your ancestry and also just you know we are all made up by the stories of those before us yeah. and like yeah. you you felt that in that moment what absolutely. it felt like to be exiled uh, from absolutely. from from the island yes. um and this is why i guess yurame project uh the garifuna communities the garifuna councils the different people who work in these projects it's because the story must go on mm -hmm. it has to be told preferably in your own language as well um and, and to keep on passing on generation mm -hmm. to generation. And that's our focus. Our main focus is language. Um, we are hoping that enough persons, and we know the NGC is on it, we know the Battle of Drums is on it, we need everybody on that task. Oh because right now, fortunately, the language is still in a lot of homes mm -hmm. but it's with the grandmothers and the mothers and it's not getting passed yeah. down yeah. and we have to send the clarion call that we will lose it if we are not passing it down if we're not teaching it to our children we're going to lose it so we teach um i think i think one of our let me put you on the spot is that <laughs> you teach your kids um garifuna yes i do okay good oh, there you go okay. we have oh, one boy. accomplishment <laughs> My kids, no, I, no, but your dad would you. definitely yeah, ensure I'll, I'll that i'll be honest with you and we were discussing this prior to um the actual segment beginning i come from a long line where yeah. garifuna is mandatory mm -hmm. right so my grandparents spoke to my parents on both sides of the family in garifuna and Growing up, that's how we spoke at home and amongst each other when we're visiting Punta Gorda, Dangriga, or wherever we gather, right? And so, I was about to say this, but I'll tie into <laughs> what you're asking. I think part of what is leading to the dilution of the language, if I could use that, is the fact that we're intermingling so often that if we never learn the language from our parents, perhaps the way I did, yeah. right? then you marry outside of your, your, your ethnicity or your culture and English and Creole becomes a standard as opposed yes. to you know, being able to communicate fluently right. in Garifuna. In my case, I'm able to speak to my daughter and my son in Garifuna. My parents actually speak to them in Garifuna as mm -hmm. well. And I think one of, the, one of the strong points of it is that there's always time and place to learn every other language, yeah. yes. right? You learn Garifuna as a foundation, and this, yeah. this holds true for any language, right? Yeah. You learn your, your mother's tongue, and then you're able to maneuver and navigate anything else after yeah. that. I, I kind of agree with you, and I'll <laughs> say it while I'll say kind of. Uh -huh. And your household in PG is a perfect example of where it can work. Mm -hmm. your, uh, your uncle's wife, um, yeah, Vincent Nunes. Vincent Nunes. Mm -hmm. She speaks Garifuna better than I do. Mm -hmm. What? And uh, yes, and she's, and she's hundred percent Creole. Yeah. Wow. Yes, mm -hmm. and she speaks Garifuna better than I do. His cousins too, but the difference was, and that's the basic difference, and why even as I grew older, I admired his family. His family was one of the few families in Punta Gorda where the the grandparents parents insisted that you responded Pondin. in garifuna and that made the difference yeah. because like at home my grandmother would speak to speak to me in garifuna i grew up with my grandparents my grandfather also would speak in garifuna but we were responding creole mm -hmm. so that you could made the understand basic difference. but you can't speak yes. yes which makes it a challenge to keep on passing it That's forward definitely Absolutely. interesting Absolutely. yeah and i admire parents who parents of mixed race children 
who insist that they will give the children both yeah. ethnicities. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a way far course, richer experience yeah. for a child. Yeah. Definitely. Once they, once they have them both. Yeah. So let's talk about how the Urame project is helping to ensure that the language is taught, mm -hmm. um, that you have Garifuna classes that are yes. ongoing. What age group are you targeting? We target everybody. Anybody mm -hmm. who wants to join the class <laughs> will join. We have um, in-person classes at mm -hmm. Ecumenical on Saturdays at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, and on Saturdays at 2 o'clock at All Saints in Billy City. So those are in-person classes. Mm -hmm. We get more um, support or following or attendees from the online courses. Mm -hmm. Those happen on Sunday at 2.15. We have level two and level two is for students who are persons who understand Garifuna, but they need practice in, um, in speaking. Yeah. And um, Dr. Gwen does a wonderful job with that at 2.15. And at three o'clock is level one, when, where we start with, from the beginning. Yesterday's yeah. class was just so nice. It, it was a review class of everything that they had learned. And the learners had to pick a partner and do a dialogue. Mm -hmm. So they would be like Kabiri and the person would answer and then um, Halio Badibu and then they would say, I'm going here and yeah. this is my age and this is how to spell my name in Garifuna. It was beautiful because um, we feel like we're making some progress. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and every, in the Wayanaha Garifuna classes, all the, the tutors are volunteers. Mm -hmm. Um, like I mentioned, we have Dr. Gwen. I've recruited my mom, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> Excellent teacher she is. Nice, <laughs> nice. Um, she, she's a lifetime educator, so yeah. yeah. Um, we have Mrs. Lucas. I just want to pick them up because they're giving up their time. Mrs. Yeah. Lucas on Saturday at Ecumenical along with um, her sister, Miss Laverne. Mm -hmm. We have Miss Bernadine on Saturdays, Miss Bernadine Kanaki. We have Auntie Eleanor. She's one of our teachers, um, tutors. She's all the way in New Jersey, mm -hmm. I believe, uh -huh. is where she lives. Yep. Yeah. And she's one of our tutors. We have Gaspar Martinez Jr. He also lives in the States and he's one of our tutors. Um, Miss Julie Lois Smith. Um, trying to remember all the tutors. Yeah. Yes. What has everybody is volunteering. Thank God. Yeah. What has been the reception from people who are interested in participating in this project? Um, the learners, mm -hmm. oh, they are so excited. When we, we, we went on a break for Easter, mm -hmm. yeah. so we were telling them, all right, we, we told you at the beginning that during holidays we would not be having classes. Mm -hmm. And they actually told us that oh, we went from break because the teachers, they weren't break. <laughs> 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 but is it, um, is, do you also have students who are not living in Belize? Most yeah. mm -hmm. are not. A lot, let me not say most, a lot of them are not living in Belize. And we also have persons who are not Garifuna, but they have Garifuna children yeah. in oh. the class. Yes. We have a learner all the way from England. We have from Canada. We have US. We have, yes. Are, and non-Belizeans as well? Non-Belizeans, wow. yes. Okay. Yes. And they willingly, willingly participate. All right. That's interesting. We so need to have a push to have more native Belizeans participate. Yes, huh? that's the that's the challenge yeah. um, to get more. And we are hoping we we haven't figured out the formula yet. But that class at ecumenical at in person class that's mostly for children. We mm -hmm. would want all the Dagriga children to be there. Yeah. You know, we um, at Ecumenical we have an auditorium and then on the side of the cafeteria there is like a, um, we call it the corn stall. Mm -hmm. We have the classes in the corn stall. We would want to have the classes in the auditorium because we envision like a lot of children yeah. and then there was space out in the auditorium yeah. Yeah. and then we would have to have a mic and PA system to lead the class. That's yeah. our, that's, that's what we want. Goal. We want the children yeah. to come. We want the children to learn. We want the children to, you know, get you know, and it's experience the language that yes. we're here because people know now that there's an opportunity to learn. Yes. Like I know I do share it on Facebook and it's on uh -huh. our um, it's on our web web page yes. website. Mm -hmm. But now that we're getting out here, where people are knowing, okay, we have the project. And yesterday I was talking to someone and she was like, um, can I just go and start? 
I said, you know what? There, go to the web page. Mm -hmm. Go to the web page. There, like the lessons that we've done, they're there on the web page. Go to it. Mm -hmm. Can I share this? Yeah. I think growing up, I've always heard and I keep hearing about cultural retrieval, right? And it's so important for us because with culture, you have various factors that come to play that make a people who they are. Mm -hmm. But then we look at food, we look at dance, we look at spirituality. Mm -hmm. All the way up there. Everything else. But then the language is the fabric. It's the core. Yeah. <laughs> it's this, the actual yeah. building you know block what? that brings um, everything together. Sorry, sorry. To no, go ahead. But something that I found to be really sad mm -hmm. at, um, at Ecumenical when I was there. We would have these really strong dance group, cultural group. They can mm. perform, they can do whatever you need for them to do on a stage and display the Garif in a culture. And you would ask them what they're singing, mm -hmm. and they don't know. They wouldn't know. So and they can sing know, the words. Yes, but they don't know. And what you would know that they don't know because there 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 are certain differences between yeah. this word and yeah. that word that makes this mean this and the make intonations and they mean. would not they would not know. And that's also part of the reason why we started teaching. We actually mm -hmm. started a Garifuna class before COVID. At Ecumenical, we had teacher, um, Senator mm -hmm. Erica Jang, um, actually teaching um, mm -hmm. Garifuna because it is urgent for us yeah. because our children, they, are, they, they, they know how to dance. They know how to sing. They know how to prepare the food. They know how to do, they know how to drum, oh my goodness. They know how to draw. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, and everything is on the everything is up have there except seen, the language. Have we seen the, yes. the the fruition of the work of Gulisi? Gulisi works with the younger kids yes. in teaching them drumming, and they, right. they learn the language. Are we starting to see, or is it still a need for reinforcement? Absolutely. When the children from Gulisi, especially, and some some of the other primary mm -hmm. schools, when they get to ecumenical, we can then build on yeah. what ah. it is that they have learned because they come um, yeah. knowing how to and I need to big up Miss Marsha and the other teachers mm -hmm. know what to sing <laughs> I just realized yeah. you know but she 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 was actually singing with mm -hmm. us um, before the before the COVID actually, um, yeah go ahead actually um, one of the issues that Phyllis Caetano who's the manager and founder of Golisi um, found and they realized that when the students graduated from Gulisi and then they move on, then they used to start to lose it because it didn't, they didn't have that continuity. But they don't practice it. Yeah, yeah. So now with ecumenical doing that, it's really good that, you know, because mm -hmm. when they get there and in terms of speaking about the not knowing the words to the song, like I'm involved in dance group, have mm -hmm. been involved in dance group from 1980. Yeah, so <laughs> yes. So yeah. that's one of the things I try to do. Like I even myself go and transcribe the words to the songs, mm -hmm. them the traditional songs, and I make sure I teach the words, yeah. teach what it means, mm -hmm. so that you know what you're singing about. Yeah. Yeah. And because one of the things that I've realized in terms of listening to the music is that because people don't realize, don't know the words and the meaning. Mm -hmm. They sing all kind of thing. That in yeah. Gaffna we say the chagwai, mm -hmm. you know. So when time they when they learn that because our songs make sense. Yeah. But when you listen to some of the words when people are singing it, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So let's uh, talk about how people can sign up for the classes. All right. Sign up for the classes. <laughs> um, on our web, well, we had a massive. Um, registration that is done now but on our website which is the you may project.org mm -hmm. you may project.org the first page is not the home page and i want to say something about the home page that we're kind of proud of but the first page that you will go to on purpose is the classes page because mm -hmm. that's what we're focused on right now uh. and the classes page has the schedule for everything and buttons right there Mm -hmm. level one level two level three you just click the button and you're in the class oh That's wow it. you made it that easy yes okay so just click the button and you're in the class we had a new learner yesterday and as a matter of fact she typed in the thing that um this is my first day and mm -hmm. we were of course welcoming to our 
new nice. new new learner but that is how you could get on as easy as that go on the website um you go directly you click that you go directly to the um classes page schedules are there um the buttons are there press the button um i want to say something about the home page though mm -hmm. the home page the name of the home page is euro may mm -hmm. and euro may for us is saint vincent and the grenadines yeah. so instead of writing the word h-o-m-e as the home page okay. the web producers wrote you're you're made. Made there when i saw that oh I saw. nice yes yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well that alone will make people want to go check out the website right now just to see it ladies yeah. it is such a wonderful initiative and we of course uh are grateful that you're here to tell us about the why behind the project and how you continue to work to be able to um ensure that people growing up will hold on to that language right. anything else you'd like to share with us before we leave the run the run yes the <laughs> The run for St. Vincent. The run for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Last year when we did the run, the run was in support of the victims of the volcano. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we sent some monies for them to, you know, to help. Mm -hmm. This year, the focus is on language mm -hmm. and the run is to support our language initiatives. The run will take place in um, six municipalities originally it was seven but one dropped out and that's fine mm -hmm. so corazal orange walk billy city belmopan dan griga punta gorda that's six yeah mm -hmm. yes 5 30 on orange saturday walk, orange walk yeah. 5 30 this saturday morning the 11th mm -hmm. of june saturday morning the 11th of june 5 30 in the different municipalities um if an adult simply wants to run we're asking for a contribution of ten dollars mm -hmm. if an adult wants to run and wear one of our fancy cute uh, oh, beautiful shirt. shirts <laughs> okay yeah. then, then we're asking for a contribution of twenty dollars right at the right. bottom of the flyer that's our flyer um is the link to register for mm -hmm. the run mm -hmm. so okay. this saturday in all of those municipalities please register for the run we have the names of the persons who are in charge, who are leading the charge in the various places right on there, along with their phone numbers. Mm -hmm. Get in touch with them, call them, please join us, please support us this mm -hmm. Saturday on the 11th of and June. And you don't have to run, you could jump, you could walk. Yes, that's up. right. <laughs> yes. Jump up if you want to jump up. <laughs> or ride in the service vehicle. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so... And even if you're not coming to run, you can uh -huh. support by buying our beautiful shirt. There it is. Our financial support is necessary. Definitely, and, and yeah. we're, grateful, we're grateful for all who support us. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for having joined us this morning, ladies. It's been a pleasure chatting it up with you guys. And of course, um, you want to take the opportunity to invite anyone to be a part of the actual um, Garfna classes as well? Absolutely. Um, again, the schedule for the classes, we have class at Ecumenical 10 o'clock every Saturday morning. Parents, send your children. We have responsible adults there. Mrs. Lucas has been a lifetime educator along with Miss Laverne. They will take excellent care of your babies for that hour and they will have fun while learning Garifuna Ecumenical 10 o'clock every Saturday morning. If you're living in Belize City, All Saints Primary School, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they're having fun as well. Mm -hmm. For the persons who would like to be online on Sunday, we have our level 2 and our level 1. Level two and our two level 15. 3. Oh. Jeez, I forgot level 3. Yeah. So <laughs> 2 15 is level 2. That's with Dr. Gwen. 3 o'clock is level 1. That's for the persons we're starting from scratch and we'll help you to get there um that starts at three from three to four and at four o'clock we have level three level yes. three persons just get on and just talk the that's like for like isani yes <laughs> people who are fluent and then we just you keep the language yeah. 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 all right so well, ladies we are out of time but we want to thank you so much for coming in and telling us all about the work that you've been doing we appreciate it oh thank just before too. we leave somebody explain to me that um we didn't leave our numbers when we went on so, so what's just the phone number my phone number six one four one two four seven that's okay. my phone number and i'm six seven seven zero seven nine nine also on facebook so nice perfect all right
Well, thank you both. We're going to go ahead and take that final break. And when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up. So stay tuned.